This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in this tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create this badge style logo design using Affinity Designer. And if you'd like to learn more about logo design, be sure to check out my Logo Design Academy. It's an 18-part video series where I go over my entire creative process for designing logos from start to finish. I'll have a link in the description of the video if you want to check that out. So to get us started here in Affinity Designer, I'm going to create a new document. I'm going to change the document units to pixels, and I want to size this at 1280 by 1280. Go ahead and click Create, and there we have our new document. Now what I'm going to do first is I'm going to create some text here on the canvas, but before I do that, I just want to make sure I have snapping enabled by enabling this icon up here, the little magnet icon. And then down here, you're going to want to make sure you have these same presets that I have here. So take a second to pause the video and make sure that your presets match my presets as you see here, and then continue on. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create some text on the canvas here. So I'm going to grab the text tool over here, and make sure you're, you're, you're grabbing the proper one. There's the the artistic text tool and the frame text tool. If you click and hold on this icon, you'll get this flyout menu. Make sure to choose the artistic text tool. And then I'm going to click on the canvas over here. And I'm just going to type in, I'm going to use all caps, I'm going to write logo design. You can obviously write whatever you'd like. I'm just going to write logo design as placeholder text for this video. I'm going to select all of that. And up here from the font selector, the font I'm going to use is called Kirsty. I will have a link to that font in the description of the video. It's a free font. But like I said, you can use whatever font you'd like. It doesn't really matter. So let me grab this select tool now. Let me make this a little bigger. And I just want to center this up on the page over here with the uh, align center. I'm going to click on that, center it up on the vertical and horizontal axis like that. So it's directly in the center of our page here. And what I want to do now is convert this text to curves. So come up here to where it says convert to curves. Click on that. And then I want to ungroup these individual letters by clicking this ungroup button over here. And then I want to unify them all together by coming up here to this icon that says add, and it's going to combine them all together into one continuous object like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a shade of, uh, I'm going to make this a different color than black. I want to make this like red or something, or it could any color you want really, just as long as it's not black or white. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, I'm going to grab the rectangle tool, which is over here, and I'm going to click and drag over the text object like this to create a rectangle going over it. And I want to send that behind the text by pressing Control and the left bracket key. And if you notice over here, it's going to lower it one layer beneath the curves right there. Uh, I want to make this black so that it has a different, so that it looks different um, than the uh, text over here. And again, let's grab the uh, Select tool and just make sure this is centered up on the horizontal and vertical axis like that. Now I want to convert this to uh, a curve. So I'll come over here to where it says Layer and click on Convert to Curves. And now I want to make a duplicate copy of this black rectangle. So to create a duplicate copy, I'm going to press Control and click J on the keyboard. And it's going to create another copy right above the original copy. You don't see it physically changing on the screen, but if you look over here, you'll notice there's now a duplicate copy beneath it. So let's click on that duplicate, co that duplicate copy beneath it so we can select it. And I want to remove the, remove the black fill and then click on the black stroke and make this a gray stroke. And let's take the stroke and make this a little wider. Maybe uh, something like that right about there. That's a good size. I want these corners to be sharp. I don't want rounded corners like that. So let me make those corners sharp by clicking this button over here that says miter join. And uh, let's make this a, a whole number because we're going to have to uh, remember this. Let's round this up to six and hit enter. Try to remember that, that number six. We're going to use that same number for the other strokes that we create here. Now what I want to do is I want to convert this, I want to expand the stroke. So I'll come over here to where it says layer and click on expand stroke. And that's going to turn that into a curve sort of object. Now let me zoom in on this a little bit. I want to grab the nodes tool, which is over here, or you can press A on the keyboard. And I want to select these nodes, these four nodes on the inside of that gray rectangle right there. I'm going to hold shift so I can select all four of those nodes at once and then just press delete on the keyboard. And what that did was that turned it into a solid gray object instead of a gray outline. What I will do now is, let me grab the select tool. Let me click on the black rectangle. Let me come back over here to where it says color. I want to make sure there's no stroke here. So let me click this red slash to get rid of that stroke. And now I want to duplicate this object as well. So I'm going to, uh, to do this actually, I'm going to hold alt on the keyboard and click and drag to make another copy of it. And I want to send that to the back by pressing control shift and the left bracket key and that's going to send that behind the gray rectangle and i want to take this note over here to the right bring this in 
so that it ends right at the beginning of the, uh, the name here. And now let me zoom in on this a little bit by holding control and rolling up the mouse wheel. I want to add a little bit of a, a dip right here in the middle so that it has a, it looks kind of like a ribbon. So let me go to the nodes tool again. Let me click right about here to add a node and then just take that node and pull it in. You might want to hold, hold shift to lock it onto the horizontal axis like that. Now let me zoom back out. You can move the page around by pressing down the mouse wheel and moving the mouse. Go to the Select tool. I want to duplicate this as well. So I'm going to hold Alt and then click and drag and then hold Shift at the same time so that it locks it onto the horizontal axis like that. Put this over here on the right side of the name. And let me just flip this vertically. I mean, sorry, horizontally. Flip that horizontally so that it's like that. Let me just move this over a little bit so that it matches up just like that. Now what I want to do is hold shift and click on the other piece. We have both of these pieces right here selected and I want to add them together. So I'll click on this button that says add and then just make sure this is centered up on the page. It should be, but if it's not, just make sure to go ahead and click on that. Okay, so we have the name with the ribbon design. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to create the background design or the polygon rather. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and hold over the star tool over here. And you're going to notice there's a whole bunch of different shapes to choose from. I'm going to choose Polygon Tool. Click on that. And up here in the settings, we want to make sure we have six sides and the curve is at 0%. Now I'm going to click and drag to create this. I'm going to hold Shift so that it locks the proportion so we get a nice symmetrical shape like that. And let me take... Right now this has no stroke color, which is good. That's what we want. Now let me activate the fill color and let me give this a black fill. And let me place this over here over the design. I'm going to click and drag this up, then hold shift to scale it up proportionately. And bring this down. I want to make sure this is centered up on the page as well. And I want to send this to the back. So I'm going to hold control, shift, and the left bracket key to send that to the back. And what I want to do now is let's grab, let's first go to layer and click on convert to curve so we can edit this further. And now I'm going to grab the nodes tool over here. I'm going to click and drag over this node and press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And then I'll take this node right here and just move it up a little bit. Hold shift. Um, yeah, hold shift to move it up like that. That angle right there is what we're looking for. Let me grab the select tool. Let me bring this down a little bit. Or maybe not. That's good how it was. If you, if you need to undo anything you just did, just press control Z. Like if you do that by accident, just control Z and it puts you back to where you were. So let me duplicate this as well. I'm going to hold Alt, click and drag on this, hold Shift so that it locks into the vertical axis and bring it up here. And I want to flip this vertically like that. Then I'll just take this and move this down, hold Shift so it locks like that and put this right about here. Hold Shift, click on the piece beneath it. Make sure you have them both selected and then add them together by clicking on Add. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come over here to the node tool. I'm going to click and drag over these top three nodes and I'm just going to position these so that they're sticking out to about right about here. You want to make sure that it's sticking out a little bit in the bottom, but much more on the top. So let me go back to the select tool now once that's in place. I'm actually going to scale this down a little bit. If you notice here, there's not much space between this ribbon and this edge right here. I want to put a little more space there. So I'm going to scale this down, hold shift to, to uh, lock the proportions. That looks pretty good. Now let me go back to the nodes tool to pull this out a little more. Looking good. And now I want to duplicate this. So to duplicate this, I'm going to press Control and J. And it's going to put a duplicate copy right beneath the original. So let's click on that duplicate copy beneath the original. Let's remove the fill and let's activate the stroke and give this a gray stroke just like we did for this object. Now by default, it should default to whatever size stroke you gave this gray object. So if you notice here, the thickness of this gray border matches the thickness of this gray border. If that wasn't the case for you, just come over here to the stroke tab and make sure that it's six points just like we did for the other one. And now I want to repeat the process that we did before. So I'll come over here to where it says Layer and click on Expand Stroke. Let me zoom back in. Let's grab the Nodes tool again. And I want to delete these nodes on the inside of the shape right here. So hold Shift and click and drag over each of those to select them. And by deleting these nodes, we're going to make this a solid fill object. So let's just press Delete on the keyboard to get rid of them. Go back to the Select tool and I'm going to duplicate this one more time. So again, we're going to press Control J. And now I'm going to click on the one beneath that to activate that one. Come back up here to the color tab. 
Let's give this a black stroke and let's click on the fill and remove the fill color and come over here to the stroke menu and let's just manually bring this up so that it's thicker than the original like that. Again, we want sharp corners, so click on miter join over here. That's looking pretty good. Okay, so let's do the same thing. Let's go to layer, expand stroke, go back to the nodes tool and delete those nodes inside of there. We're holding shift and clicking and dragging over those inner nodes to delete them because we want to make this a solid fill object just like that. Now let me zoom back out. Okay, that right there is what we're looking for. What I'm going to do now is add in an object right here just to make this logo look more complete. You can add in whatever, whatever object you'd like, but I'm going to link in the description of the video uh, a copy of a vector deer silhouette that you can use if you just want to follow along with what I'm doing here. So to open that, I'm going to go to File, Open, and I'm going to look for deer.svg. And it's going to open it in a new tab. If you notice up here, here's your tabs. Here's what we were originally working on. And here is the new tab that we've opened up with this. So to be able to work with this, I first want to expand this menu right here by clicking on this icon. And we're going to see the path. The path right there is what we want. So I'm going to click on the path to, to activate that. Right click it and go to release. And that's going to release it onto its own layer. And let's take the original layer, layer one, and just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. Now I want to right click this object, this deer silhouette and go to copy and come back over here to our original tab and go to edit um, or you can just right click and go to paste like that. Now I want to move this over here towards the center of the logo like that. Right about there is where I want to place it. That looks pretty good. Now I want to lower this beneath the ribbon or the banner. So to hold, so to do that I'm going to hold control and press the left bracket key once, twice, three times. Three times and put it beneath the banner there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give this a gray outline like I did for these other objects. So let's duplicate that by pressing Control J and let's grab the copy beneath it. Come up here to the color tab. Let's get rid of the fill and let's activate the stroke and give this a gray stroke just like we did before. And again, we want to make this six points. So come up back, back up here to where it says stroke and change this to six. Press enter. There we go. That's what we're looking for. And then we're going to expand the stroke as well. So we'll come over here to where it says layer and click on expand stroke. Now let's click off of that to deselect everything. What I want to do now is just put a little star over here in the bottom just to complete this design. And then we'll go about finalizing this so that this is all, all of this gray area is negative space. So let's come back over here, right click the polygon tool and look for the star tool and click and drag to create a star. Hold shift to lock the proportions like that. Come up here to the color tab. Let's remove the stroke. Let's activate the fill and make the fill color white. Grab the select tool, place this over the design right here. Hold control and shift to scale that down. Let me zoom in a little bit so I can see a little better. That's what I'm looking for right there. And I just want to center this up on the page as well. Just like that. Now let me zoom back out. Now let's begin the process of finalizing this design so that this gray area is negative space. So to do that, let me zoom in. I'm going to click on this gray border right here. And then I'm going to hold shift and click on the black border behind it. And with them both selected, I'm going to come up here and click on subtract. And if you notice, that is now negative space in there. Now let's do the same thing with the deer graphic. I'm going to click on the, uh, the gray deer graphic. And you'll know you have it selected when you, by checking the, uh, the menu here. I'm going to hold, actually, you know what? I want to duplicate that. Let's press Control J. We're going to need a couple of copies of this. Control J to duplicate it. And then hold Shift. Click on this inner black polygon and do the uh, subtract function right there. And then finally, take on the, uh, take the uh, original gray copy. Hold Shift. Click on the border over here. And again, do a subtract. If you notice, it's starting to come together. So let's do the rest of this over here. Let's take this gray. This gray rectangle, we're going to have to subtract this from these ribbon tails right here. We're going to have to subtract it from the deer and then subtract it from these two objects as well. So let's activate that. Press Control J to get a copy. Hold Shift, click on the deer. Subtract. Same thing again. Take the gray object, Control J to duplicate. Hold Shift, click on the black polygon in the middle. Subtract. Again, click the gray box, Control J to duplicate. Hold Shift, click on the border, subtract, 
And then finally, we don't have to make a duplicate because this will be the last one we do. Take the gray box, hold shift, click on the banner, uh, the uh, banner ends there, and subtract. Now the final step would be to take the star, hold shift, click on the uh, polygon in the middle, subtract, and then take the text, hold shift, click on the ribbon or the banner, and subtract. And if you zoom out, you can see we are done. We have created our design. You could select all of this and make this whatever color you'd like. Now what I did for the uh, thumbnail of the video, I gave these all different colors. So let me make these colors similar to what I did for the video. I'm going to click on this object, hold shift, click on this object so that we have the banner selected, hold shift, click on the border so that we have the, the banner and the border selected. And let's make this a single color like that. And then I will take the uh, inner shape right here and I will make this, you know what, I will make this border, I'll make this border a brown color. You could really make this whatever color you'd like, it doesn't really matter at this point. Uh, make that the same color, okay that's good right there. And now I want to take the deer, I want to make the deer the same color as the banner, so I'm going to grab the dropper over tool, the, the dropper tool, and uh, actually no, the deer is going to be the same color as the border, so let me make that the same color as the border. And now let me grab the select tool. Let me take the uh, black polygon and make that the same color as the banner. I'm pretty sure I got the order of this wrong, but that, that's okay. You can make this whatever color you'd like. Now, if you notice, the red is showing through the deer here because it's layered beneath the deer. So to do that, to, to lower this beneath the deer, I'm just going to press Control, Shift, and the left bracket key to lower that beneath like that. And there you go. That should do it for this tutorial. That is how you can go about creating this simple badge style logo design using Affinity Designer. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. And as always, thanks for watching.